episode of Duvall's Collection Expansion Extravaganza right here on ToyWorldOrder.com. Don't you say a word because I messed that word up. It's all downhill, ladies and gentlemen. Once you get to my age, it's all just, it's just spiral down. It's just, it's gonna happen. Just take it. It's fine. We're your hosts. I'm Jason Duvall. This is my lovely wife, Carrie. Hello. That's all you get is a head nod. Yep. We are back with an all-new episode with some really cool stuff. Um, Keep talking. Hang on over here. Just uh, pick him up here. This is our oldest dog, Chase. Say hello, this Chase. A, this is a whiny little turd. He's standing behind us having a cow, so... Because he hears us talking, he can't figure out what we're talking about, huh? We've got some great stuff for you today. We've got uh, we got a dog. It's a Shih Tzu. Uh, great breeds. What's happening? What are you doing? What's happening? No kiss. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, we oh, found okay. some cool stuff this time around. We'll start out with... Um, well, let's start out with some of the Happy Meal stuff. These, we'll talk about these first. Kids in the 80s may remember these. These are Burger King cups. Um, and they what? were Burger King cups. I said coops, kips, cups. Kips. I don't know what I said. Burger King kips. Uh, but you had, you had Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Darkseid. And the weird thing here is that I found, uh, I mean, the figures themselves are really great. The cups here uh, were cool because the cups actually connected. And then the heroes, is this Superman's cup? No, it's not Superman's cup. This would be Superman's cup. This would be Superman. I got you. Yeah. So you had Superman, who you know he would go on and would create a cup hold for him. You had uh, this might be Batman's cup. This guy, I don't know who he is. That's Dark Side. Okay. And you had. We're missing one. You had Wonder Woman's cup. You had Dark Side's cup. The cups actually all fit. <laughs> are are individually made for each of the characters. The only one I'm missing, I'm missing Batman's cup. I've got Batman, but I'm missing his cup. Um, I found these at our good friend Fred's house um, in a box, and unfortunately, like I said, I found all the cups, but I couldn't find couldn't find a cup for Batman. But uh, finding these is kind of cool because I see these at, at flea markets and antique show, uh, shops a lot, and people always want a ridiculous amount of money for these guys. I don't think I've ever seen them. Um, they're they're pretty cool. I mean, Fred had like nine and ten bucks a piece on these things, but of course, I paid. I think these were eighty. Nineteen eighty-eight. Yeah, eighty-eight. Well. God, I would have sworn they were. No, well, that's earlier. weird. The cup says 88, but the figure says 85. Yeah, they do. Right? And these were 85, and I don't know why the cups say 88. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, they sure do. Yeah. Because I knew this was early 80s. It was an early 80s set, and they didn't reissue this set. I mean, these were. Weird. Uh, maybe the cups were just. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's hmm. crazy. But I knew these were early 80s when these came out, um, and they're fun collectibles for that's superheroes. That's kind of neat. Yeah. These came out around the time Superpowers was out from Kenner, uh, and that's why these were out, because they were out for the uh, the Super Friends TV show as well. Um, and these are, like I said, I wish I had Batman's cup, because then I would have all four of these complete, but even without the cups, just as the figures alone, they're very, very cool. They're, they make really neat displays, and they're really well done for being basically Happy Meal toys. That's what the Burger King Kids Club, before they were Kids Club toys, uh, the Burger King's kind of their, their little toys. Um, just really well done PVC figures and cups. Uh, cups are a little dirty. I'm not going to drink out of them. I might wash them out a little bit. But, uh, Wait, um, you don't want to no, use these when we eat our supper? No, I'm good. Oh, okay. I don't. Whatever that yeah. disease is that's in there, I don't uh. want. I'm okay. But these were fun to find, and like I said, I see them all the time in antique stores and flea markets and stuff. And people always want a lot, a lot of money for these guys. So uh, it was cool to find them at Fred's and get a good deal on them. So I'm happy with that. Uh, oh. Next up, you can take those aside there. These actually were from McDonald's, of course, based on Charles Schultz's classic Peanuts cartoon, comic, uh, comic and the cartoon, of course. Uh, and McDonald's had a number of these, and we've we've happened to find Charlie Brown and Snoopy complete. Um, yeah, so Charlie I Brown had there his. There was two. There were four. There were four. Yep. All four so we're well, I think Lucy and Linus are the two we're missing, but uh, Snoopy came with a little bale of hay with a pig in it and Woodstock on the top, and a little wheelbarrow that he could carry. Mm -hmm. um, 
Charlie Brown is supposed to hold this I couldn't a get lot him to better hold than he, he. Well, there we go. Well, kind of. But he's got this little. I don't know what that is for a farm. It just. Yeah, we. I don't know. Yeah, I should know because I'm from a farmland. She, she's from. Looks like a. From till, a maybe a tiller. T maybe a tiller. Tiller, maybe. Small, small town. Small town. Um, these are these are cute. Those are just like the little uh, farmy peanuts. The figures themselves are just PVC figures with no movable parts on them. The movable parts were all on the racks and stuff. Kind of the same thing as the Berenstain Bears figures that came mm. out around the same time. Right. They all came with accessories that they could sit on or hold uh, or whatnot. So um, these are really, really cute and they're great for, again, happy meal to collectors. They're small, like Carrie said, that's why she loves them. Uh, and the fact that they're based on peanuts makes them really, mm -hmm. uh, you know, hot commodities when it comes to certain collectors. So these are really fun. We'll have to find uh, Linus and Lucy, I believe, are the other two. We'll come across those eventually with their pieces. We might have to look it up and see. Yeah, cute, cute toys though. Um, like I said, I want to find the other two, and uh, maybe here eventually we'll come across them in the wild. So I'm sure. something, to, something to look forward to. So let's see what else Carrie has put up here this show. <laughs> this is neat. <laughs> this is actually from uh, well, probably 70s. Let's say this was uh, 81 actually. Who made this? Who manufactured this? Uh, Helm Toy Corp. Uh, welcome back to the show, Chase DeVault. Uh, Hell Toy Corp made this. Uh, we've shown off, I think we showed the Goofy one. We've got a Mickey one like this. Um, and these were just little little figures on. You would press the buttons together and they would they would do little tricks. You could hold them and they... Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm wondering how many of those there are. Uh, it's something we could probably look up. I don't even know what they're exactly called. I just know they're... Just little trapeze guys. Yeah, figures on trapeze. Okay. Yeah, I know. I like playing with them. They're fun. Uh, yeah, the sticker, pushing buttons. The sticker on the front's a little, it's missing a little bit of the corner there, but um, I think it was, we said before, it's hard to find these where the strings aren't broken. Um, and I actually found this at the third Sunday. Um, there's a guy that sits up there that always has just tons of, tons of stuff on his table. And it's all just the most random stuff. And this, while he's a little dirty and beat up, this was just sitting along one of his tables for four bucks. And I was like, well, I can't leave that here that's gonna have to come oh off god me. forbid i know right lady standing look yeah yeah <laughs> so strong i know these are really fun though these these were kind of the same things i had when i was a young kid um that my parents would give me they were cheap they weren't that expensive they came carded at one time and i think they were like maybe two three bucks my parents would buy them for me i'd play with them and then they just get kind of get tossed aside who knows what happens i know right uh, these are fun collectibles, especially with licensed characters, because like we said, we're not sure how many licensed characters they did of these, but we know there's a Mickey, a Donald, a Goofy, we know there's a Smurf, um, who knows who yeah, else they made. we may have to look that up sometime. Yeah, we may have to do some research and see what else we find, but uh, again, these are, you know, little trapeze artists on, yeah, 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 look at, yeah, <laughs> it's a strong Smurf, it's hefty Smurf, baby. Oh, cool stuff, I know, cool. right? Cool stuff. A couple Rainbow Bright items here. Don't squeak that. I will not. This actually was from Taco Bell. I'm not going to squeak it because uh, the dogs will go nuts and we just uh, relinquished one of them. This was the yellow Sprite from Taco Bell. Plus, we were... did um, one of the previous episodes. We did um, like a blue one or a red yep, one. Yep, we did a blue and a red one. This is the yellow one from that set. Now, I think we have all of them. Um, of course, he has this little, this little hang tab. Um, his booklet is missing. It was attached to his hand. But these were made exclusively for Taco Bell uh, in the 80s. They, uh, you know, they so squeak. Colorful. Yep, they are colorful. Little sprites from River Bright. They do squeak. They got little squeakers in them, so they were just like little squeak toys. Um, it's kind of a weird thing for Taco Bell to do in the 80s. There wasn't a whole lot of other Rainbow Bright stuff that, that was done in fast food. Just, just these, um, and just these stuffed animals. So, but they are really great collectibles for Rainbow Bright fans. Um, they're a little smaller than the larger scale sprites that have been made in the past. Um, and like I said, I think there was only four of them, and we now have all four of them. I think so, so yeah. yeah. So, and I'm very happy with that because they're. They've, we've come across quite a few of yeah, them. Yeah, they're there. usually thrown in like some tub of stuffed animals for quarter, yeah. so. Yeah, they're usually pretty pretty affordable. Yeah. Uh, next thing is uh, this really cool little flock, <laughs> uh, Hallmark licensing and uh, clicks. I don't know when this was made, uh, but the fact that it's a little AA battery powered clock, um, and it's uh, it's just a little Rainbow Bright clock uh, with, with an image of Rainbow Bright in there. Um, Apparently just, it is um, a little after 8.30. <laughs> uh, that's what it says, but yeah. it's not that's all right. Um, yeah, just a little, just a little thing for Stop. for double A. The dog is going yah yah down here, ladies and gentlemen. It's crazy. Um, yeah, just took a little double A battery and just put a little double A in there. And I think that was like ten cents in a yard sale. Yeah, so he wouldn't have paid a lot of money. Yeah, for that. it was not not that expensive at all. Um, very affordable little collectible though, and 
something that needs a little cleaned up still, but uh, it's just a nice little odd collectible that we found just in a bucket full of 10 cent stuff that I was like, well, it's Rainbow Bright, I'm gonna grab it. I don't know when it was made, but uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's no, yeah. no year on the back. Yeah, pretty, pretty cute little, pretty cute little plot. Pretty cute little collectible. All right. Uh, let's look at Disney scary stuff. Disney stuff. stuff. Yeah. Disney babies. Again, somebody commented a couple episodes, uh, you know, quite a few episodes ago, that uh, they, they just don't like the baby stuff. And uh, I, I can appreciate and understand people's opinions on the matter. Carrie loves them. They're so she, cute! She adores them. She thinks they're the cutest little they, things. Oh my god. I mean, look at Mickey he's swinging uh, and he's just having so much fun. These little cups were from 1984. Um, now, were these... I'm sure these were sold in like the baby aisle or the, oh, okay. you know, in, in an aisle in the stores. Um, this one has uh, baby Donald and baby Pluto on it. It's got Mickey and Minnie Minnie and Daisy. Daisy. Um, oh, no goofy. No goofy. The cups are a little beat up, yeah. but meh. But they are very, very adorable little just, cups. They're very colorful. Um, the designs are really cool. Yeah, they're I mean, a little, they're, little beat up, but they've been old, used I mean. and loved. And, um, you know, just something Carrie found at the estate sale that she was like, I'm buying these. Um, but again, Carrie loves the little Disney baby stuff, and I mean, it goes, just goes to show you that she will pick them up wherever she can find them. If they're cheap. If they're cheap. If they're cheap, otherwise yes. they don't. Yes. Uh, this is kind of neat. This is a Walt Disney Skating School. I don't know when this was made. Uh, this might be a newer tin. I want to say we might have found this at the estate sale. Too. We did all, all the Disney yeah. stuff was. Uh, this just basically just a little collector tin. Nothing, 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 really. nothing fancy, nothing special. Uh, the graphics on it are what's really cool though because the graphics are kind of this mix of uh, kind of 50s, 60s, 40s, 50s Mickey uh, 70s, 80s, Donald and Pluto, uh, you know, Goofy's on the back, um, Donald's nephews with different colored shirts are on here, uh, Minnie's on here with the kind of 50s eyes and the 80s style, Daisy, another Mickey. Um, it's kind of a cute little carry-on, you know, carry-along tin. Uh, makes a nice display piece, most tins do. Uh, no, no date on it, no. but again, some people, there are collectors out there who collect nothing but these types of metal tins, and they are very collectible because they are very colorful. Um, they're usually pretty hard, kind of like metal lunch boxes to find that aren't rusted up and beat yeah. up. This is in pretty good shape, so um, something I do that, think this was probably a little bit newer, maybe, I don't know. It might have been, maybe. but I like it. we gravitate towards stuff like that because it's odd, it's unique, and it's something we don't have and makes a good display piece. So, um, you know, it's something that Carrie wanted and we picked up. Hmm. This, I actually wanted all the, the placemats that were there, and she made me pick one, which is kind of sad, because the other placemats were really cool, too. Um, Can I say why? Sure. Well, because we have, like, ten. We do have a bunch and of placemats. And they're, like, the, they're, like, turned this way, like, folded underneath a bunch of stuff. Like, they're not even, like, up in This, there. this actually, these We like this one, because the back. These placemats are really neat. Uh, there were, in the 70s and 80s, a lot of these types of placemats made. Some of them were made were for like Pizza Hut, some were made for Hardee's, there were giveaways. Uh, this actually is unique because it's uh, Cinderella and Prince Charming. Uh, you've got Snow White and the Dwarves uh, in front of Cinderella's castle. And the cool thing is this actually came from Walt Disney World. Uh, this, I don't know if it was sold at the parks, this may have actually been uh, placemats they used at one of the restaurants in one of the hotels at one time in the 70s. Yeah, because we, I don't remember seeing placemats sold in any of the stores we went in. Uh, this is very cool because it's very much an old school 70s uh, Walt Disney World here. Um, but yeah, the front. You might be able to amazing. tell what year it's from just by what's on the back. Um, you know what I mean? Because you kind of know yeah. what's new and stuff. But well, pretty much everything that's on. Well, the submarine ride was there, so it's it's probably early 70s, maybe early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, for this placemat. Uh, we have several placemats. We have several Hard placemats. Slam. It is, and most of them are Disney placemats. They are. Um, kind of the things that we see that we're like, never seen one of those before, didn't know they made those. Um, very cool collectibles you can find them, because usually the placemats have amazing, amazing artwork on them, and are well worth picking up for any collector. And again, we have a ton of them, don't know where they're going to go, but we'll, we'll figure it out eventually. Yeah. Someday. Someday when we decide Something to do the... Something else that probably needs a frame and probably. Get hung up on the wall. Something that eventually I think... Or we could put them on our dining room table. Yeah. <laughs> we don't ever use that. <laughs> we really don't. No. Don't even know why we have a dining room table. We do. We don't use it. Mm -hmm. It's our catch-all at times. Yeah. That's what happens. I think it's most people's. Yeah. 
Let's move on to a couple of kids' books here before I do some action figures. Um, we got a couple coloring books here for you today. And these are fun. I'll show these two off first. These all came from uh, Fred's place, which a lot of this stuff came from Fred's place. For a lot of people watching are like, man, I really want to go to this Fred's. Yeah, he's still got a ton of stuff too, let me tell you what. Uh, these are great. These are some G.I. Joe coloring books. This one comes from, oh, 89 was this one. You could tell because it's some of the newer uh, late 80s Joes. Uh, the, the coloring books are really nice. This one I don't think's ever been colored in. This one's got like uh, a lot of the late late 80s, early 90s vehicles in it. Um, the artwork in here is just spectacular. Um, God, I love these old coloring books. Destro, I, I just love, love, love these old coloring books. Um, these are really great though. Uh, if you ever make me mad, I'm gonna come down here with some crayons and just color in all my coloring out. books. Yes, but I'm uh, not gonna color good. I'm just gonna. This one was 86. This one was from Marvel Books. That one's really thick. Yeah, this is a really, really big, really thick. G.I. Joe coloring book that had a that had an ongoing story in it um, that pretty much spans the entire coloring book. Um, so it is the artwork in here is really cool. It's really early 80s. It's most of the early 80s characters: Zartan, Baroness, Cobra Commander, the Dragonfly, um, the Dreadnoughts. You know, just just a ton of great, great 80s imagery. Image, imagery. Um, I love these old Marvel coloring books because they're hard to find one and two we found a bunch of co coloring books uh this is the this at the time was the biggest gi joe coloring book ever uh, we found a bunch of coloring books in the antique mall recently and the lady wanted like three or four bucks a piece for them but and too they, bad they, they were, were devastating i know they, they were, were colored in just, and it was too were, bad they, they were really, really rare ones. there were wuzzles ones just a bunch of like really that one didn't rare. look like it was colored in either no that one has not been colored in at all there are no pages colored that's in that. hard to find yeah sometimes well, we'll buy a one uh, looks like one page was colored in but oh but it, actually yeah. it's decent yeah somebody, would like somebody, somebody did a decent job Whoever on that did that did good yeah pretty good job on that that's not bad one oh. page out of all that and then this one is fun because this yeah, is, not this, is no, this one has not been colored in this is actually voltron defender of the universe mm -hmm. coloring activity book from 84 uh, from uh let's see uh we're just uh yeah it's licensed by merchandising but it was a world events production uh, and this, you know, the artwork in here is very, very early 80s-ish, of course, you know, it's Voltron. Uh, some great, great puzzles, just some great artwork of the characters in here. Um, just, I love these old coloring books. And I know we keep saying that, you know, we got to stop buying kids' books. But every time I see a coloring book that's really cool, that's licensed, that hasn't been colored in, I have to pick it up. I have to. There's just no way around it. It's, it's got to come home with me. Uh, Voltron one was really neat. Um, and it was like, well, I, I gotta take Voltron home. It's gonna come home. So, uh, of course, the answer is to all puzzles today. Very small coloring book compared to the G.I. Joe one, though. Very cool, well, though. because that was the biggest G.I. Joe coloring book was ever. was the biggest G.I. Joe coloring book mm -hmm. ever. Uh, action figures this time are pretty cool. These actually, again, come from Fred's house. And these were a bunch of... Uh, Ooh, we have a story we can tell about this. Do we? Oh, we do, we do. Uh, I can't believe you forgot about that. Oh, I'll tell you. Yeah. These actually, there were a couple of different versions of these. Um, these they've were, been marked down like five times. Mm, uh, first off, there was the Terminator 2 line from Kenner based on, of course, the Terminator that 2 film. This looks different than these. It is. It okay, is. I'll, um, I'll let you go ahead. Yep, this, this, was, uh, this one was the secret weapon Terminator uh, with hidden uh, chest cannon. So I've got the battle damage Terminator and his weapon. I've got the techno punch Terminators. Now I've got the, I've got the, uh, the secret weapon Terminator, which uh, is pretty cool. All of these Kenner figures were really neat. Um, this one, of course, when he flips down his chest, there's a missile launcher at his shoulders that pops down and fires out. That's pretty cool. And then the second series they did was actually okay. Terminator 2 Future War, which there still were like Terminator 2 figures and there were Future War figures. So there's a uh, rapid repair Terminator with uh, field repair tools. Um, so he has battle damage head and left arm can replace now, with a new arm and new head. Do you He's like these neat. because you really like the movie or you just I, like the toys? I like or? these because the company. I like Kenner stuff. I love okay, the so old Kenner like stuff. you're not like a huge fan of this. Uh oh, I mean, sure you like the movie. I like right, the movies, yeah. but you're not like um, This one is the, the Hot Blast Terminator with Bazooka Sprayer. He's pretty neat. Um, Looks like he's little bits and pieces of it been melted off to show the endoskeleton underneath and got a little water blasting cannon which is cool and then this one was the villain was the cyber grip villain with crushing claw action um, he was one of the one of the few well the only villain besides the t1000 that you could get uh, out of the different versions um, this is kind of neat the right sh the figure's right shoulder claw can rotate 360 elbow bend shoulder gun can rotate to front to back 
uh, figure can hold weapon in his left hand. You squeeze the figure and he can hold another Terminator. Uh, pretty cool for a kinder figure. Are you going to leave these in the, this one's kind of yellowing. Yeah, it is yellowing a little bit. Are you going to leave bit. these in the boxes or take them out? You know, I haven't quite decided yet what I'm going to do with this. This one's bubble is a little yellow, so I may open him. Um, the other ones, I haven't decided yet if I want to open them and display them or leave them on card. I may end up opening them and displaying them because these figures are too cool to leave in package, really. Um, you know you want to play with them. I do. This, you, this one's bubble's a little yellow. You know yellow. you want to put that in his hand and shoot I do, it. I do. Uh, I, I love Kinder stuff. I love finding this Kinder stuff. Uh, and it's been nice to find this stuff uh, at Fred's because Fred just has buttloads of it just, you know, on card just sitting in boxes, uh, which is really cool. And the fact that I was like, well, I'm going to buy these. I don't collect Terminator lines, but I collect Kinder lines. And for the prices that they are, I can't, you know, I couldn't pass them up. I think they were like, I think I paid four bucks a piece, maybe a little less a piece for these guys, uh, which was a good deal on card. So, yeah, I, I probably will open these and display them, but. Very good action figure finds, uh, and a fun, you know, like I said, all the Kenner stuff, the old Kenner stuff is great. Um, it's a shame that they, Hasbro bought them and now they're out of business and you won't see Kenner stuff anymore because the way that they did their action figures was uh, just so weird and strange and odd that you just gotta love them. So, some Terminator stuff. Let's, uh... Speaking of Terminator stuff... There is a story. Carrie and I were on our way to the store here in town. Uh recently and on the way there we passed a little place uh that usually has a bunch of like marine boats and stuff out yeah, front it's that like they a sell power sports store or something yep. whatever turns out there's a hobby store back behind it that we didn't know existed and as we passed by i went uh stop and turn around and go back uh, because out front of there was a empty terminator 2 the arcade game cabinet that was in beautiful shape um, that still had the mirror that was used in it. Uh, the original arcade monitor is still in there, but they stripped everything else. All the, all the, the actual arcade ROM, the power adapter, everything's been stripped out of it. Which is okay, because I don't need all that stuff. I don't even need the monitor. The monitor's gonna end up going bye-bye once I find a safe way to take it out of there without killing myself or those around me. Um, so of course, we were in the car. Um, after calling the, uh, the, the, uh, because the, the, the store was closed. The store was closed. All the stores now were closed. Uh, so I we called, didn't know who, which store this Didn't know if it was free. To. No idea. So I called the alarm company. And knowing that they'll pick up because it's an alarm company, and said, hey, it's going to sound like a weird question, but I need to get a hold of whoever owns these buildings uh, to see if this arcade captain outside is garbage or not, and if I can take it because I do not want to get arrested. Uh, so which I have to say was very I would never have thought to call them. I, I was very proud of you for Thank thinking you. of that. Seriously. Thank I would never have thought I was in the box. Thank you. So he calls me back a couple minutes later, takes my name and number, calls me back and he goes, uh yep, he goes, I got a hold of them uh, from the call list. They said it's free, you it's yours, you can have it. So uh made Carrie leave me there in the heat. I said go home, get the truck and bring the truck back. <laughs> So Carrie being the loving wife, she, and she was excited because, well, it was free. It was, well, and you were so, I just could not believe, I just, all we were going to go do was go buy some groceries. Turned out to be like a two and a half hour affair. And I'm like, only you, but I was so happy for you. It was but cool. Then I decided after that, from now on, we just need to always drive the truck yeah, everywhere. Yeah, we just need to drive the truck everywhere. Know, you just never know what you're going to find. I know, right? <laughs> well, see, I've got a, I've got an arcade count in the house here um, that you've probably seen in a few videos that we've done through the years. Uh, that actually I do use. It does get played, and it does. It has it has every arcade mm -hmm. game and every everything on it. Um, but I've never been happy with that cabinet. And the Terminator cabinet is big enough with enough room that I could put more. Um, I can actually put all the controllers that need to be included in a system like that, from the trackball and everything else, into the the actual front of that arcade cabinet. And you know, and be able to play it right because right now the one we have is two players. I can actually make the Terminator two one four players. Um, yeah, I know, right? So that's my plan. Eventually, is to fix that cabin up, put a new monitor in it, get it down here, and then just transfer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? and then transfer everything that's currently in my cabinet into this other cabinet. So that's my plan for the future. Um, that's what I plan to do. Uh, we're on vacation, so I plan on messing with that a little bit too in between doing stuff for the site. Um, so that was kind of fun though. So we. So that that's kind of a flea market find, but we can't show you right now. No, we'll show you. I'll, I'll include a picture well, no. of it. It's not going to be a great oh, picture, okay. but I'll include well, a picture. Well, I'm going to say it's not going to be like right here next to No, us. it okay. won't be done. No, there's no way. <laughs> but I, I will put a picture of it just, just to show you that this is the kind of stuff if you go out and about, you can't find it. Well, who would have ever thought you would find it? And then our cabinet, like I said, it's really good shape. Uh, 
you know, it's well, just... Well, and it shows you that I was surprised that you found it because usually when we're driving, I drive and you're doing this on your phone the whole time. My, my head's buried into my phone. So, and I'm always telling you, pay attention to the world around you. Yep, and so I did. So I couldn't believe you even saw it. I did yesterday because I, I was looking at my phone, but I... I was looking at something and, and watching where she was going at the same time and just and looked up and went, as we drove by, I was like, Because oh. I didn't see it. Yeah. I would never have seen it. So, so. yeah, it was a fun little uh, free flea market find. Yeah. It was a free market find <laughs> on collection expansion extravaganza. Oh. That was Carrie's joke, mind you, from yesterday. I'm did I say that yesterday? Yes, she did. She oh, said it's a free market dumb. find. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> but a very cool, uh, very cool thing to go with the Terminator 2 lines. Yeah, and of course, yeah. uh, because of that, I believe Pixel Dan uh, Earthly left a message on my Facebook that said, uh, I really hate you because you find everything and I'm jealous. So, yeah. sorry. What can I say? That's what happens. That, that's my luck. So, well, so, that's what I was say. Sometimes you are just lucky, I think. Sometimes. Sometimes uh, I think it's good to karma. We just happened to be going to the store at that time because I don't think that would have sat out there any longer. No, it would have been gone. Until Monday no, or whatever. It would have been gone. Right. Let's, uh, here, let me get these back here. Let me get these here. Let's see, there we go. Alright. Actually, you know what? I got one action figure thing left. Oh. Let me get this out of the way. This was something else that came from Fred's. This was, of course, another Kenner item uh, for the real Ghostbusters. This is the Ecto 3. You just about have all the real Ghostbusters stuff, don't you? No, got it. Oh, no? No, yeah. no, no, no. Let me see this one. This was the Ecto-3. This was their little race car Ecto-mobile that you uh, came out around the time as the uh, uh, Scream figures. Uh, the, the Scream Fright figures were... Comes with the ghosts. Yep, comes but with the ghosts. But not the people. Yeah, not the people. Do you have the people? Um, I think I've got a couple. I might have the... I've got that Egon. Uh, but this was really cool because it, it does look like a race car. It's got the turbine engines, the big kind of fly trap uh, ghost capture paddles on the front. Um, you could fit all four Ghostbusters on it, which is kind of cool. They could all four ride on it um, with the little things up, chasing after the ghost. Um, you know. Oh, I see. So it comes down. Yeah. And traps him or whatever. Yeah. Ah. So I, the only the only Ecto I'm missing, I have Ecto two, which was the helicopter, and this is the Ecto three. This is still sealed. Um, this was at the at his toy sale when we originally went the first time and I passed it up and left it there. Um, and it survived. It made it all the wow. way through the third time we went and I just was like, and I think I paid 10 bucks for it because uh, it was still sealed. And this this actually isn't going to get open. This is going to go on the shelf like this because uh, I don't really want to open this. Uh, I, 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 if I open it, the only reason I... don't reason think I, your other one's open, is it? Uh, no. 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 It's not. But a very cool, very cool find for 10 bucks for the Ecto-3. So usually they sell on eBay for like... 35 maybe 40 bucks um, so couldn't leave it there had to bring it home with me Oops. every time you're like i just couldn't pass it up i just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't i just couldn't it. leave it there i just couldn't no. really had, had you couldn't home. really no. you couldn't this is cool this is actually a puzzle from warren uh warren publishing I don't think I've seen uh, this, before. this came from fred's this was another fred's find Jeez, fred is like your new bff all uh, right uh warren did a bunch of these these 3d jigsaw stand-up puzzles uh one you can make a big puzzle a big puzzle picture of a lot of the G1 Transformers. And then it also became not only a stand-up uh, G1 Transformer, but also you could transform it into the car. So, which is kind of cool. And if you've never seen one of these, <coughs> the pieces for these, uh, on one side were puzzle oh. designs. On the other side were the were the actual well, figure designs. Yeah. Now how are you going to, what are you going to build? I will probably build the figure. Well, I'd like to build the puzzle because the puzzle is really cool. Well, this is one of those instances where maybe you should have bought two. Yeah, he didn't have to. This is all he had. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Then you could have done both. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Blue Streak, uh, which was the, the character featured on here, was kind of cool. Yeah, 1984 is when these were out. Um, these are, I've got a, a Voltron one, a Vehicle Force Voltron that isn't complete, which is sad. Um, and some of the pieces are broke that I've kind of been on the lookout for another vehicle for Voltron eventually down the road. This puzzle looks hard to put together. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty complicated. There's Blue Streak's head. Um, there's his there's his gun. Um, very cool though. Warren, they, these were really neat and it's a shame that they don't make these anymore because they, these are really, really fun little puzzles um, and make really great display, display pieces. The problem is, I think with a lot of these people threw away once they punched the pieces out, they would throw away these extra pieces that didn't go to anything. But the uh, problem was on the back is that there were pieces to the other puzzle. puzzle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you would Stupid find these, people. you would find these with the character complete, but all of these, the, the actual 
tree pieces were gone, which sucks because then you couldn't build the other puzzle on the back, the actual picture puzzle. So, which sucks. Um, I would love to find more of these. I need to figure out how many Warren, of the, Warren actually did of these. I know there's a Vehicle Force Voltron. I know there's a Voltron. I know there's a couple of other Transformer characters they did. And of course they did my like my Transformers Command Center we showed off in a, on a, uh, my Activity Center on a yes. recent episode. Yes, yes, yes. They did that as well. So they did a lot of stuff like that that was licensed, that was very unique and odd. Um, again, a great thing for the 80s that they just don't do anymore. Uh, but Blue Streak as a, uh, as a, as a stand-up Transformer 3D jigsaw puzzle is kind of cool. Let's, uh, let's wrap this up with a couple of board games here, and we'll, uh, we'll get off the airwaves this show. <laughs> this one's kind of cool. This is actually Parker Brothers. Uh, this is a game called Quicksand, the Slip Slide or Seek game. Um, this, is, uh, this was 89, so uh, a little more recent. But these were cool because the figures, the actual plane pieces, <laughs> are in five pieces. You've got the hat, the head, upper body, lower body, and the feet. And basically what happens is you roll across here, and you try to make it from one side to the other you actually would sink lower and lower and lower. Mm. Um, so you, know, you lose. If a player rolls an alligator, he may scare you backwards along the track, uh, land on the mudslide space, and you'll slither back. And uh, this is all that's left of Jungle Jack, but he can still win. Because you can get, basically, the more you sink, the more pieces you lose, but it's still possible for you to win. Uh, it's kind of neat. It's kind of a very unique little game. Uh, for two to four players, ages six to adult. I um, mean, one that I'm looking forward to playing because it's just, it's a very odd game. Um, it looks like it's, like it's pretty simple. Just kind yeah. of move around the board and do what it says. But... Yeah, pretty pretty easy. Of course, the pieces, as I said, were uh, pretty, pretty, pretty cute little pieces. So you had the feet, the lower body, upper body. You've got your head here and your hat. So that's what the figure would look like, and then as you sink, you would lose more and more so pieces. It's only your face, you're like, help me! So it's only I'm your hat sinking. moving across the board. Um, yeah, very unique game from, from Parker Brothers. And uh, Dave and I, actually, Dave Draper and I, found this in an antique mall that we went to uh, near, uh, out in Bloomington, Illinois. I wasn't with you. Carrie was not with us that day. We went to the third Sunday Marketplace. You should, you need to be super, you both need to be supervised from here on about. Yeah, I broke stuff. If you've listened to the Dave and the Vault Toys Collectible and listened to the episode Smashy was Smashy, this, the game that broke this it? was one of the board games that broke stuff in the Is antique mall. Is that what you mall. call the episode, that, Smashy Smashy? Yeah, that episode was called Smashy Smashy. <laughs> Um, so that was one of the board games. I this, love you. I know, thanks. I'm uh, glad I wasn't with you because I probably would have yelled at you. Yeah, I would have got in trouble. Dave just kind of walked away from me quickly. <laughs> well, I might have done that too. Yeah, Dave was I'm, like, I'm not with him. Yeah, Dave was like, mm, I'm out. So, <laughs> well, that's what happens with me, I guess. Um, so, very cool finds. Uh, very, very neat finds for this. Uh, I was very happy to find this. So, uh, and then the last board game we've got for you today is actually a, uh, a Mary Poppins game. Uh, Walt Disney's Mary Poppins game from 1964. I know. And this is cool. I paid 15 bucks that for this. That has survived pretty yep. good. I mean. And this game has never been used. Uh, I don't think the pieces have ever quite been... They may have been punched out once or twice, but the fact that everything is still surviving, all the playing pieces, the actual spinner for the, for the spinner itself, uh, the board's got a, a little bit of a tear on it. I love nothing. games that have, like, one thing of instructions. Yep. But the board itself oh. is really, really cool looking. Um, yeah, it's a very, very cool looking board. Yeah, um, this was a fun find for me to come across because uh, again, We've never seen this mm, a game for the '60s. And this game was pretty unique because you had these several pieces, and this actually, instead of dice or 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 whatnot, you know, a, a spinner. This actually was your spinner. How does it? What do you mean? How does that work? Basically, what happens is you would put it. Mary and Bert ride upon the, uh, I think I've got that upside down, but that's all right. Let's, uh, let's fix this here. Well, get the idea. Mary and Bert would ride on it, and then you and you basically would spin it, and wherever which one of them would land, I believe, is where uh, that's you would ask Mary your instructions, and she would tell you by pointing to whichever way, because your pointers here are the bottom here. Oh. This goes on here. You put this. In the middle of your game board. Oh, okay. Now I understand. Yep. And the okay, game board that's why itself. I'm confused. <laughs> yep. The game board itself has a bunch of spots, so you would you would spin it, and wherever Mary lands, like whichever side Mary's landing on, okay. wherever that lands, like this go one back landed. Go three. Oh, never mind. Uh, go to the nearest picture square and ask Bert. So there's a lot of like 
interesting little things to do in this game. But yeah, the fact that this game has survived in such good shape with everything. The box and everything. Yeah, the I box mean. and everything. It's just beautiful. And this was another one of those games at the Antique Ball that uh, the dealer space we bought these from, the dealer had just moved in. He was brand new. Just that weekend he had put stuff in, and it was nothing but board games. And I cannot tell you the joy I had looking through them, and everything was complete. Every board game he had had all the pieces. Poor Dave had to take my place and yep. wait for you to... Dave had to wait for me to go through all the board games to figure out if everything was there or not. But yeah, uh, a game from 1964, and this good of shape that survived this well, uh, is very hard to find. And very hard to find for 15 bucks, let's put it that way. So, there you go, gang. That brings us to the end of this episode of Duvall's Collection Expansion Extravaganza. Uh, make sure you check us out. Go to youtube.com forward slash Toy World Order. Subscribe to us. Helps us out greatly. Um, and also, make sure you check us out on Twitter. You can follow me at Puppet Duvall. You can follow Carrie at Mrs. Duvall. Um, check us out, because uh, you never know what's going on in the world of the Duvalls. Uh, and until I never know what's going on in the world of the Duvalls. That's very true. And there you go, gang. Uh, until next time, uh, keep digging, because uh, you never know what you're going to find. Take care.